The Golf GTI Club Sports is the fastest and most focused GTI to date. It has more power than the standard model and a more aggressive chassis tune. This is Carsten, he's responsible for vehicle dynamics, so it's either his fault if it's no good or it's to his credit if it's really, really special. <laughs> we'll find out in a moment. So, Carsten, can you talk me through the main technical revisions for this club sport? Okay, let's first talk a little bit about the engine. We've increased the power of the engine from 230 horsepower to 265 horsepower with an overboost function up to 290 horsepower and 380 newton meters torque. So that's about the engine. The second thing that's very important on this car is that we have changed, revised the aerodynamics. It's the first Golf right now, and we are very proud of that, that has downforce on both axles. Front axle, a little bit downforce, and significant amount of downforce on the rear axle to increase the stability level of the car and to give the car a more precise feeling. The third big step put forward was the chassis setup. We've tuned the car to be more neutral by revising the shocks, the dampers, the spring rates are a little bit higher with the <coughs> more stiff, 10% stiffer. We've revised the, uh, sp the spring aids and the bumpers and so the car is, has less understeer and has more traction. Okay, and there are two tyre options. Yes, at first we have a 19 inch tyre as option uh, which is about uh, width 225-35 and at the second option we have a Michelin Pilot Sports Cup tyre which is uh, with a width of 235-35-19 inch tyre which gives the car much more grip. Okay, this car's on the Cup 2 tyre. We know that tyre well. It's special. I think we're going to have some fun on that tyre today. Um, what, what should I feel out on circuit compared to the performance pack car? As I've just said, the car definitely is more precise, it's more stable, it definitely has more fun to drive, the car's more agile, it has less understeer and it's much quicker on the corners. Okay, that's all very promising. This man did the Mark 1 Focus, so I think we're in for a bit of a treat here. Let's have a go. Once again at Portimao, and it's neither pitch black nor flooded today. What a treat. So, Golf GTI Club Sport. What exactly is this car? Well, first of all, it's not a fully stripped out, proper track day weapon like the Megan 275 Trophy R. That car has bucket seats, it has harnesses, it doesn't have any rear seats. It's a massively uncompromising car that this isn't exactly the same sort of thing. It's still supposed to be usable, practical, comfortable in everyday use, but just a bit more up for some proper track work. We've got a proper circuit as well today. Portimao is just the place. So what have they done to this Golf GTI Club Sport? Spring rates are up around 10% all round with retuned dampers, but all the tow, camber and caster settings are all the same as the standard car and so is the track. There's no road driving on this event. That's because these are really, really early pre-production cars. In fact, this is one of three cars that they've got. They probably won't appreciate me sticking this in the gravel, so I'm going to try not to do that. So those suspension revisions are just supposed to make the car a little bit sharper, a little bit more precise without completely compromising ride comfort. So one of the important points about this car is actually the aero. You wouldn't think so, would you? I mean, we haven't got any massive aero addenda on this car. We don't have huge wings or a really deep splitter. But what they have done is take all the lift out of the car. So we've got a small amount of downforce on the front axle and much more downforce on the rear axle. They call it a significant amount on the rear axle. And that just means that the back end of the car is much more stable than the standard car. That's important because that's meant that they can shift the roll stiffness backwards and that makes the car much more agile, much more playful and it gives it a much better front axle. So, we're not making loads of aero, but the aero that we are making, and they're not quoting any figures, the aero that we are making, it makes the car that much more lively, that much more agile, that much sharper at the front end because they've been able to push the roll stiffness backwards. That's a really important point. Can you feel it? Absolutely, you can feel it. The car just feels more pointy, sharper, more responsive, more agile. It's just 
better cut out for track driving. We don't have the lunatic oversteer of a Megane 275 Trophy R. Few things do. I mean, that car will swap ends on you if you turn into a quick corner off throttle. This car isn't quite as lively as that, but it's definitely a lot pointier than the standard car. So we're running the standard brakes. They're the performance pack brakes. So they're not upgraded for this car. I've been doing a few quick laps. And after a few hard stops, they do just start to wilt a little bit. You can feel that they're hot. You can feel that the brake pedal is going a little bit long. So the engine, it's weird, isn't it? It's 265 horsepower, but for 10 seconds you get 290 horsepower. That's slightly bizarre to me. They say the 290, the boost facility, that's just like a little extra token, a little extra goodie. And that kind of makes sense. If you consider this car a 265 horsepower car that occasionally gives you 290 horsepower, then it makes sense. If you consider it a 290 horsepower car that sometimes only gives you 265, well, it makes less sense, doesn't it? I suppose the important point is you can't necessarily tell when you're getting 265 horsepower and when you're getting 290, it's all pretty seamless. The point is that you're driving it mostly on the torque. We've got 280 pounds full of torque. That's a good lump. It's a good engine, this. It's sharp, it's responsive, it likes to rev out to the top end. Yeah, good muscular low down and mid range. And we've got a lovely, sharp, precise six speed manual gearbox. They do the DSG as well, but frankly, in a car like this, you want the manual gearbox. We've got the diff from the performance pack model. So it's a mechanical locking differential, but electronically controlled. And it just means you can stand on the power so early, just there, and it drags you out of the corner. It's really lovely, and you don't get that wasteful wheel spin of the inside wheel, which just kills your drive away from the corner. The standard tyre on this car is an 18-inch Bridgestone, but as an option, you can get the 19-inch Michelin Pilot Sport Cut 2. We know that tyre well by now, don't we? It's a hell of a tyre. And that's the one you want. You just get mighty, mighty grip from this tyre. You can really lean on the chassis. Yeah, that's the one you want on this car. It's not a complete understeer defeat device. Sorry to use that term, VW. There is still some push in the front axle if you get greedy on your way in, but it basically holds on really, really well around a circuit and it doesn't fade after a couple of laps either. It's a really good, consistent, stable, grippy track day tyre. So 2016 is the 40th anniversary of the Golf GTI. That's why they've done this car, it's a celebration. They haven't said that they're limiting the build numbers, they haven't stipulated an exact figure. But the build time, the duration that this car is being built for will be limited, point being, if you want one, move quickly. UK orders will open late January, early February, and they will get snapped up. The price is yet to be announced, but it'll be somewhere between the GTI Performance Pack and the Golf R. So let's call it 28,000 pounds. Would you have this car over the four-wheel drive, more powerful Golf R? I drove to the airport in a Golf R, and I think you'd take this car. If you really, really love your driving, if you want to do the odd track day, take this car. It's just more cut out for quick circuit driving than that Golf R is. It's more lively, it's more entertaining. Okay, it's got a little bit less power, but you're not going to feel that. This has become the sweet spot in the Golf range. The Club Sport is fitter, faster, and more athletic than the standard GTI, but it isn't quite as exciting on circuit as a Renault Sport Megane. Nonetheless, it is now the best quick golf on sale. To watch the Golf GTI Club Sports rivals in action, click on the links and remember to subscribe to the channel.